What's the point of Youth Month when unemployment is on the rampage, when young people won't be getting vaccines for goodness knows how long, and when the youth of South Africa continue to bear the disproportionate brunt of corruption, of bribery, of an inadequate delivery of services? Are we being played? Let's get started. Spread the fire fam. Welcome back to SMWX. Good to have you back if you're returning. If you're new around here, my name is Dr. Sizwe Mbofu Welsh. On this channel, the Sizwe Mbofu Welsh Experience or SMWX, we explore South African politics through interviews and analysis. And today, I want to talk about Youth Month because I think it's high time that we addressed these commemorations that come around every so often and in my view are starting to become a way of pacifying people rather than a way of commemorating important events. So in this video I want to speak about Youth Day and I want to suggest in this video that although there's no doubt that the generation of 1976 that dedicated many of their lives, many of their limbs, many of their best years to struggling against the apartheid government, there's no doubt that that generation is a great generation that should be commemorated. But there's something strange that, that's happening around these days of commemoration. And I think that political interests, political parties, especially the ANC, has begun to use these days as a way of deflecting from the present by making people think about the past. And in that way, they are appropriating the idea of 1976, which by the way, was by no means an ANC event for their own political ends in the present. And I think it's really important that young people wisen up to the strategy because Youth Day has become an increasingly hollow ritual, a ritual in which people get up and grandstand, especially politicians in power, and pay lip service to the interests and the aspirations of young people for one day, for one month. And then what happens? The same old statistics come back to haunt us. The same old crises affect young people disproportionately. So I wanna suggest that Youth Day Youth Month, these events, these commemorations are actually being used as a tool to sidetrack young people from the problems in the present. Now let's speak about just a few issues which show the devastating situation of young South Africans as they find themselves. And as we, yes, I'm still as one commentator down below on this channel says, I'm still youth in Dala. So for a few more years, I can speak from this perspective. Let's look at youth unemployment. Recently, Stats SA released its quarterly labor force survey, which demonstrated that the crisis of unemployment hits young people the hardest. By certain definitions of unemployment, which is defined in various ways, depending on who's seeking a job, youth unemployment has reached ridiculous levels. Sometimes, depending on your definition, going as high as in the early 70s. But whichever way you look at it, the problem is not simply that youth unemployment is unacceptably high. It's that over the last years, when we've known we've got a problem, it's got even worse. So when the economy is in a crisis, that crisis hits young people more than many other places in the economy. And one has to ask oneself, if Youth Day is so important to the South African government, how come there are no young people in the cabinet? And don't, don't tell me someone who's like approaching 50 years young. I mean, a real number of young, fresh-minded, energetic, new, innovative people. Why do we always get served these geriatric, old, tired 
cabinet ministers and presidents for that matter. Isn't it time that if Youth Month is so important that young people were actually represented in the highest echelons of power? So it's all well and good for the president, for example, to stand up or the minister of people, young people, uh, women and persons with disabilities to pay lip service to the crisis affecting young people. But how come that's not actually demonstrated in the highest offices in the land? Secondly, let's look at the question of vaccination. We all know that South Africa's vaccination strategy has left much to be desired. While there have certainly been global headwinds as far as uh, vaccine inequality globally is concerned, and while some of the problems have been just outside of the South African government's control, the rise of new variants as well as uh, the disaster in emergent biosolutions or whatever the company's called in Baltimore, uh, leading to 2 million Johnson & Johnson vaccines having to be destroyed. There was really very little that the South African government could have done about that. But those caveats aside, the communication of South Africa's vaccine strategy has been botched from the start. It's not clear exactly why it has taken so long to get a diversity of vaccines and also it's clear that young people in particular in South Africa will have to wait an extremely long time to get vaccinated, probably only in 2022. Whereas in other places in the world, even in other emerging economies, young people have a better chance of getting vaccinated. So once again, just like the unemployment crisis, the COVID-19 vaccination uh, rollout will disadvantage young South Africans. Now, they may be at lower risk, but young people around the world are at lower risk. The point is that South Africa, even in comparison with other countries, and even with South Africa's best, uh, with, with the best version of South Africa, if we actually got our act together as a government, as a state, as the Department of Health, we could be as young people in a better position and we need to have higher standards than just, oh, well, this is just the way it is. Let's talk about youth institutions in the country. The National Youth Development Agency hasn't had a board since 2019. This is the agency that's supposed to champion the interests of young people. And quite frankly, we'll see what happens with this new board. But, you know, this institution has become uh, since its inception, a breeding ground for cater deployment. Why on earth should you be on the board of the NYDA just because you have links to the ANC Youth League? That doesn't make any sense to me, especially when there's such a crisis. And, and when did you know, the, the mandate of youth institutions become solely focused or disproportionately focused on entrepreneurship as opposed to the other aspects of young people's lives that matter equally. So these institutions, which I think the, the annual budget is something like close to half a billion of that particular institution that have been set up to purportedly serve the interests of young people have also been subverted by political interests and have left young people over the last decade and more in the lurch, holding the bag for South Africa's major crises. So. The question really is, are politicians using these days, using these moments of commemoration, using these moments of collective grief in a way, to actually divert the anger, which is legitimate, and the energy of young people away from holding politicians to account, away from pressuring government to take young people seriously as opposed to just symbolically pretending to, to care about their plight. And it's that which I think we need to reflect on on Youth Day. Youth Day can't be about falling into the narrative created by others for youth. Youth Day can't be about a government that has no young people in its top tier, 
telling young people that they really do care and uh, crying crocodile tears for youth unemployment, poverty, um, gender-based violence and multiple scourges and crises which disproportionately affect black people, disproportionately affect women, disproportionately affect young black women. So I want to say on this Youth Day, Youth Month, when this video will be released in and around that time, that if we are truly to live up to the spirit of the many young resistors who have fought against multiple generations of oppression, then we need to realize that Youth Day and Youth Month, in fact, Youth Year and Youth Decade and the Youth Era, which needs to begin, needs to go beyond these moments of commemoration and reflection and reignite a spirit of resistance, protest, pressure, channeled in productive and fruitful directions, but always against power and always with the sense that a new future is better than the one that we have now and is possible and that young people can summon the energy, the insight and the foresight to bring that future about, even if it means that those who happen to hold power ultimately end up falling as that new generation rises. So if that's what we mean by Youth Month, then I'm all for Youth Month. But if Youth Month means the speeches that we see and the, the fake tears and the fake promises that we hear, then count me out. Let me know your thoughts down below. Hashtag SMWX on social media. Uh, follow me at Cizu and Bofu Walsh on multiple different platforms. Like, share, subscribe, and tell me what Youth Day means to you. Do you think that Youth Day, do you think that Youth Month still matters? Do you think that it's being used by people in power to pacify young people? What should this new generation that's rising do in order to make our voices heard so that our country can rise once again to a level of true greatness, greatness that is within the young generation that exists in South Africa today? And how can we truly live up to the ideals of those young people who sacrificed, dedicated life and limb so that we could be in a position of relative freedom to carry forward the frontiers of liberty in South Africa? Aye, aye. Thank you.